Welcome to our review on nervous system damage. First thing we need to know then is what the nervous system is made of. And what we actually do is we divide it up into two systems. You've got the central nervous system or CNS, which is the brain and spinal cord. And then we've got the peripheral nervous system or PNS, which consists of all of the neurons that connect the CNS to the rest of the body. So when we're talking about nervous system damage, it's any damage that's occurred to the CNS or the PNS. So there's a range of potential causes for this damage. It could be as a result of an injury. It could be a genetic condition such as Huntington's disease. It could be another type of disease such as an infectious disease, or it could be as the result of consuming a toxic substance. When we've suffered some kind of damage to our nervous system, then what's going to happen is impulses won't be able to pass effectively through the nervous system. So there's some kind of a block occurring here. If we consider the peripheral nervous system, first of all, and what the effect of damage may be there, this could affect sensory and motor neurons. So as a result of that damage to the sensory or the motor neurons, we may not be able to detect pain. So you could actually sustain an injury, but not realize that. You may have numbness in a certain area. You may lose coordination. So what we actually find is that our peripheral nervous system has a very limited ability to regenerate. So if it's minor nerve damage, then that will self heal in time. If someone suffered more severe nerve damage, then there is the potential for it to be treated through surgery. So for example, we may be able to graft nervous tissue over a damaged section to actually restore that conduction path to allow the signals to travel there. If we've got severe damage, what we may see is some slightly more severe effects here. So you may lose control of certain body systems. You may suffer from partial or complete paralysis, depending on where the damage occurs. You could well suffer from memory loss or processing difficulties. And the key thing to remember here is a big difference between our peripheral and central nervous system is while the peripheral nervous system does have a limited ability to regenerate, the central nervous system cannot regenerate. So any damage done to the central nervous system is permanent unless we can use a surgical method to correct it. As for when we're carrying out these surgeries, it's not a given that if you've got an injury, it can be repaired via surgery. So if we consider why that is, the spinal cord itself is made up of 31 pairs of nerves and each nerve contains many nerve fibers. The spinal cord itself is only 1.5 centimeters in diameter. So what we'd need to do in order to have some kind of a repair to our spinal cord is identify within that 1.5 centimeter diameter cord, which particular nerve fiber has been damaged and carry out a repair without damaging any of the others. And that, as you can imagine, is not an easy task. So what we generally find is those people who do have spinal injuries, then this is normally irreversible. When we come to think about how we can actually repair damage to the brain, then our first problem is that it's actually very difficult to diagnose. If, however, we've managed to diagnose what the problem with the brain is, then we have a few different treatments that may be appropriate. So the first one is if we end up with a brain tumor, then we could use radiotherapy or chemotherapy if it's in a location that can be accessed or if it's the type of tumor that responds. The next option is using surgery to actually remove any damaged tissue. The big downside to this is obviously in order to remove damaged tissue from the brain, you've got to find a way to access it. So that does mean taking literally the top of your head off and then you've got to access that damaged region and remove it without causing damage to the surrounding areas. So very, very tricky to do. The last option is something called deep brain stimulation. So this is where we go back to inserting electrodes into the brain but we're actually going to use them to stimulate brain function when we've got those electrodes in place. 
Hopefully at the end of this video you can recall the different types of damage whether it be to our central nervous system in the spinal cord or the brain or our peripheral nervous system and also talk about some of the treatments that we can use to deal with those injuries.